Today, I want to talk about getting OSC open sound control working in Pure Data Vanilla. What is OSC? OSC is a protocol developed at SYNMAT at UC Berkeley for communication among computers, synthesizers, and other multimedia devices optimized for modern networking technology. Okay, what does that mean? Well, we can compare that to our definition of MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, that's extremely commonplace in consumer music control equipment. MIDI, on the other hand, is defined as a protocol for connection and communication between a wide variety of electronic musical instruments, computers, and other related devices. So there are a few differences in this definition, but one of the most significant is that open sound control is optimized for modern networking technology. So we're going to be sending our OSC messages over a network, as opposed to how we usually send MIDI through cables. Okay, so why would we want to do this? What's the benefit of using OSC over MIDI? Well, one of the things I use it for a lot in my data-driven instrument design is the fact that it's wireless. Now, MIDI can be wireless too, but since OSC is working with networking technology, it's sort of wireless by default. MIDI is great for synthesizers to talk to each other because there's specificity about what all of the MIDI messages mean. If you're interested in that, I'll throw up a link to another video. But OSC messages are undefined. For example, XLX. And so those undefined OSC messages are labeled at the point that they're sent. So today I'm going to be sending from a phone and an iPad, and those messages are going to be labeled from those points. Now, this is good and bad. The bad is my computer receiving it doesn't know specifically what those messages are to do and I have to make sure that I find those labels appropriately. The good is that this is then highly customizable. And again, if I'm trying to design unique and novel musical interfaces, this might be pretty helpful. Finally, and very significantly, OSC data can be any kind of data, not just integers 0 to 127, or in the case of the pitch bend, much wider. But OSC messages can all be high resolution floats, decimal points, and can even send strings like hello or things like that. Again, for our data-driven instruments, these high-resolution floating decimals can be really, really useful in getting us some musical control. So let me get started here in Pure Data, and I'll be jumping back and forth between my desk here and my screen. Okay, the main thing we're gonna want here is net receive i before you accept after c hyphen u hyphen b. Now let's open this up and talk a little bit about this. So this net receive is listening for incoming messages from a network. Okay, so we know that OSC is sending over a network. What we care about for this U and B is a U flag for UDP and a B flag for binary. Not to get too into it, but when we're working in pure data, these are the two flags that we want to add to make sure that we're ready to look at OSC data as OSC data. We're going to need one of these listens here. What that number that comes after the listen is, is that's the port that we're listening on. You can choose any number you want, but we just need to make sure that we're sending from our phone and iPad and listening at the same place. So the number I usually go for is 8,000. So this is a message, command two, listen, eight, Zero, zero, zero. Bink. Okay. Now, you can send OSC messages any number of ways, as long as you have a device that has a network connection. So, for my iPad and my iPhone, I have a software called Touch OSC. Once again, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I think this software is $10. It served me pretty well. Ages ago, there was a software called MRMR Murmur, which was a free software which could also send OSC messages. And I'm sure there are a whole number of these applications now on varying degrees of cost. Additionally, if you have an instrument that has OSC built in, then that would work too, as long as we get this incoming port of 8000 agreed upon between the different devices. Now, I won't bore you with the tedium of trying to zoom in my camera into my iDevice screens, but let me throw up a screenshot here. Today, I'm not going to care about the incoming port on my iDevices, on my iPad and my iPhone. I'm just going to be sending data from there into PD. If at a later point you want to send data back, then you're going to have to worry about that outgoing port too. One thing that's significantly important here is this IP address of what we're sending to. I don't think there would be any harm in me sharing my local network IP address, but uh, since I'm not an internet security person, I'm just going to blur that out for the sake of this video. But 
it's important that that IP address matches the IP address of your computer on the network. Next in our pure data patch, once I have this net receive, click on that, command one, there's an object called OSC parse. And all this object does is make that OSC data readable. So let's check this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a print here, hit enter. I'm gonna bring over my PD window here. And then I'm gonna start listening. Okay. Open up OSC on my iPhone. All right, so now we can see all this OSC data coming in. Now I've got sliders on my phone here. Whoops. I can do different things. And that's just a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go to this listen. The way we stop it is we can do listen zero. I think. Okay, so now we've stopped it. Duplicate. Let's just be able to flick on and off. Now let's just to confirm if we did listen on 9,000, I think. Click on that just to make sure. Nothing. Okay. Back to 8,000 where we're listening. Oops, I need to click on it. Bink. There it goes. Okay. So we're only listening to 8,000. 8,001. Bink. Not moving. 8,000. Bink. It's gone. The first thing here is this list, which I don't like, and it's not really doing me any good here. So I'm going to go over to my patch here. Maybe there's a way that I can get those both on the screen at the same time so we don't have to keep flicking back and forth there. There we go. Much nicer. The way we can get rid of that list is just by putting in list trim. So this just cuts off the part of that message that says list. So let's look at this now print again, listen. So we can see now that word list has disappeared. Remember it was up, up in those messages before, and now that's gone. Okay, so ACK XYZ. So this is the accelerometer data. So this is why when I tilt my phone around, those numbers are changing, right? It's constantly sending this even if I'm not moving the phone, but that's okay too. So now, we can just use a route. So what this will do is this will take from here, all of the messages that start with X, Y, Z are going to come out here. So let's go this print. Start it up. Okay, so now we've lost that ACK X, Y, Z, but we just have those three numbers coming out uh, packed together and we can unpack those in just a second. But just to show what's coming out here is what doesn't have the ACK. So Nothing happening there, but here, let's push some things. Ah, okay. So here, we have different types of messages coming out. Okay. Back to that XYZ, we can see we've got three lists here. So then all we need to do is unpack them, unpack. Zero, zero, zero. And so this takes that list of three numbers and sends it out as three distinct numbers. So I'm just going to go Command-3 here. Command-D. Command-D. Command-5. X. Y. And Z. Now we can see those numbers changing. That's our accelerometer X, Y, and Z. Okay, well, I'll crack up my iPad for the rest of this because it'll be easier to see things. Okay, so we've got some data here. What's its range? Eh, we can see these numbers going negative. They're mostly below one, but we see them jump up above one a little bit. Let's assume that it's about negative one to one, but let's do this. Then let's go command one times 44. Now I'm choosing 44 here because there are 88 keys in a piano. 
And so if I'm going from negative one to one, that gives me negative 44 to 44. So that's about the range of a piano. Command one, add 60. Middle C is 60. So that means we're going to go from 60 as a center point. We're going to subtract 44 from that. So that'll be what? 16. And we'll go 44 above that. So that's 104. Might be a bit too low, but that's okay. Let's uh, go command three. Those are our numbers that are coming out. We can see them change. And then I'm just going to go M2F. And then send that out to an oscillator, which I send out to my DAC tilde. Good gravy, that's loud. Give me a sec here. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, that's not bad. Let's, uh, this is again negative one to one, so let's take it. We'll multiply it by 0 0.3. Add 0 0.3. Okay, then we can take this number times tilde. Might get it too quiet there. We can go five. And you know, we could just easily do this to the cutoff frequency of a filter or something like that. Uh, I suppose for our last step, we could take all of this, duplicate it out, and then multiply tilde, ring modulate these two signals. Okay, that's kind of neat. We could throw in a phase or. So there you go. A simple implementation of OSC in pure data. Just to simplify, here are our important points. First, we receive internet information with this net receive, hyphen U, hyphen B, to make it the correct protocol for OSC. We've sent it a message to listen on 8000 that matches where we're sending on the iPad or whatever other device we're sending from. OSC parse interprets those packages from the net receive as an OSC message. And then list trim is cutting off that list statement at the beginning. After that, what you do is going to be based on what messages you're fishing for. How do you find out how they're labeled? Well, uh, you saw how I did it. I did it with a print. And then based off of what that print, I was able to use routes and unpacks to get to the data that I wanted. Once you have the data, what do you do with it? Well, I got another video about data driven instruments talking through that, but I always come back to our five characteristics of sound pitch, loudness, timbre, duration, and spatial location. If those are our sonic parameters, then that can be our sonic canvas to play with. In the patch I had at the beginning, I was taking this OSC data, using it to generate MIDI control data, which I then sent out to my Eurorack set. As with all control data, we can turn it into whatever the heck we want for whatever purpose we want. Give it a shot, try a bunch of things, I'm sure you can find some free software to send OSC data from your phone to pure data.